next prop is another static one. We will be building this life-size gargoyle using the chicken wire sculpting method covered in the beginning of this video. And instead of using burlap and monster mud, we will be now showing you how to cover your prop with cotton sheeting and latex. Okay, let's go over the materials used to create the gargoyle prop. Like in the Angel of Death prop earlier, we'll show you a detailed material list at the end of the segment. You're going to need an 18 by 18 piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. You're going to need a scrap piece of 2 by 6, this is approximately 18 inches long. You're going to need a 25 foot by 48 inch wide roll of 1 inch diameter hole poultry netting. From there you're going to need approximately 6 heavy duty coat hangers. You're going to need a small stack, approximately 4 to 5 old white cotton sheets. You're going to use about one gallon of mass grade latex. You're also going to need two different colors of latex paint. We use flat black and flat gray. You're going to need a small roll of baling wire or all-purpose wire and a few drywall screws. You're also going to want to go out and pick up a can of polyurethane foam sealant or triple expanding foam insulation. This particular brand is used for filling large holes and gaps and is available at most home improvement and hardware stores. Last but not least, you're going to need some type of a latex gargoyle mask. Now don't be too concerned with the color of your mask because at the end of the project we're going to show you how to base coat and dry brush it. Also to keep the shape of the mask you're going to need some plastic grocery bags. Here's a few of the tools that you're going to need to create this prop. A pair of wire cutters, a pair of needle nose pliers, cordless drill with a Phillips bit attachment, some type of a saw to cut your 2x6, a staple gun and some staples, and some disposable paint brushes. Okay, to help move things along, we already preformed all of our chicken wire body tubes. We have the two arms, the two legs, the torso, and a small piece for the neck. You want to begin with your torso section. This one's approximately 12 inches in diameter and 48 inches long. What you want to do is you want to take the overlap section of the chicken wire that you wired down the length of the tube, and you'll put that down flat on a surface. And on the right and the left hand side, you're going to take a pair of wire cutters and you're going to cut approximately six inches into each end, or each side, so that you have two slits cut on, on the end of the tube. Okay, now that you've got both of the slits cut on both sides of your torso, you can begin with the legs. These are preformed tubes, six inches in diameter, about 48 inches long. And you know, what you're going to do is you're going to place this into the slit on one side of the torso and it extends about halfway into the torso tube. You're going to want to do this on both sides. Okay, once you have one tube in, you can begin wiring that into the torso tube. You're going to want to make sure that these are all double wrapped around each connection. To hold it together. This particular prop is more of a free form prop. There's no internal wood support so you're going to want to make sure that these are really secure. Make sure you do all the way around any cut edge that you can secure to the leg tube. Okay now we're going to repeat this process on the other side. I'm going to bring the leg tube in to meet the other one. Okay, next we're going to be showing you how to form the foot. 
the calf, the knee, and the upper thigh of your legs. First start off by holding the back of the prop and you're going to bend the leg forward and up on an angle because this prop is going to be in a crouching position. Just want to collapse the chicken wire in on itself. Scrunch it until you get it to go where you want. Next you're going to form the upper thigh. You're going to scrunch in the chicken wire around the knee and then you're going to push the two together to form a bend. And if you do that right the chicken wire will collapse on itself underneath the knee. Next you want to taper the calf down to the ankle and form the foot by just scrunching it really together and bend the foot up. Now don't worry if the foot isn't long enough, we're going to be adding chicken wire on top of this to strengthen it. At the same time you can build the foot out to make it the right length. Okay we have our legs attached to the torso and we have them shaped to the desired angle. Next step is to get your plywood base and you're going to have it positioned so that the points are to the front and back of the gargoyle. Your feet are going to be attached to the sides and the arms will be eventually attached to the sides. So the next step you want to do is bring your body over we're going to be stapling the feet to the plywood. And then you're going to take your 2x6 and you're going to find the desired height and you're going to mark it with a pencil so that we can cut this. And this is going to form a block to support the, the butt of the, of the gargoyle. Both feet attached to the plywood base. Next, you take your 2x6 and set it behind your prop. Position your, your legs at the angles that you want them and your upper torso at an angle that you like. And find the desired height of your gargoyle and mark the 2x6 with a pencil. And you're going to be cutting that and that's going to go underneath the butt of the gargoyle and help support it. Okay, you got your piece of wood cut. You're going to place it underneath the bottom of the gargoyle. Find a position on the base and you're going to mark the position so that you can run some drywall screws up underneath this and mount the board. Okay, we've turned the gargoyle on its side and we're running inch and five eighths drywall screws in through the bottom of the plywood and we're gonna use three of these. Okay, next you're going to be stapling the bottom side of the gargoyle down to the 2x6 and to do that you're going to have to push in on the back side of the chicken wire in order to get some staples down into the wood. And once you get that staple down you can pull the back 
back out into position. Okay, once you have the bottom of your gargoyle attached to the 2x6 mounting block, you're going to continue working on your legs and shaping them. And up here at the torso where the bend is and it meets the, the top of the leg, you're going to cut a couple sections and wire them together so that it forms a stronger area at the bend. And you're going to want to do that down here at the knee too and down at the ankle where it's bending over top of the foot. Okay, after we spent some considerable time shaping the legs and the, the feet and the lower half of the prop, you want to work up here at the top you're going to cut slits in both sides of the torso for the arms, same as you did for the legs down below. So just take your snips and cut straight down the sides, and you're going to cut about 10 inches down. Okay, we lowered the prop down to a more comfortable working level, and we're now going to attach our first arm. Now this tube is approximately 4 inches in diameter, 48 inches long. Insert it into the one slit that we made in the side of the torso and it's going to extend about halfway in to the center of the chest. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire in the arm around the outside edges. We're going to leave the two top pieces extend upward until we get the other side in. Okay, next step what you want to do is you want to wire the two arm tubes that are butted up against each other inside the torso tube together for a little bit of added strength. Next step is to pull down the front top of the torso tube and you're going to pull the back over top of the arm tubes and wire that down on top of the arm tubes. Now we're going to wrap the front half back over top again to the back. Wire that in all the way across. Okay, we've already formed the one arm to the shape that it's going to be. And if you can kind of tell, we just shape the shoulder, bend the arm down, tilted back in towards the knee and then the forearm comes straight down and then you bend it into a hand. So we're going to show you how to do that over here on the other side. First you want to start up here on the shoulder and you're going to be crimping this down and pulling it around towards the front on the inside of the knee. You want to crunch all this down on the inside so you get a nice rounded shoulder. Up here at the top, you're going to hold on to the shoulder and you're going to push down so you have a place to put your neck to. And that will help define a shoulder line. Make sure the arm is still pretty full out at the top. Bring it back in and where the elbow would be, you're going to punch it in a little bit and continue it down towards the hand. Now you'll notice the arm is a lot longer than it needs to be. What you're going to do is you're going to find where you're going to be making a bend for the hand, bend it there, and then for the hand, you're just going to be pushing that back in on itself, scrunching it together. That'll give you a 
nice mass of chicken wire for your hand. And we're creating the illusion that this is hanging on to this board. So we're wrapping the hand down a little bit around it. Okay, your next step is to attach your hand to the plywood base with your staple gun. At this point, like we talked about before, anywhere you have two tubes meeting one another, it's a good idea to attach them by cutting a piece of the wire and wrapping it around. And that will really help secure the sections and strengthen the overall prop. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that on both arms. Okay, our next step is to form a neck tube. Now the, the length and the diameter of that is going to be determined by the mask that you use. Ours is approximately 8 inches long and it's about a 6 inch diameter. And we are placing it on a downward angle Okay, we have our next stump in place, and the next step is to take your mask and you're going to pack it with plastic bags on the inside to keep the shape of the mask. And just place it on the neck and position it to the angle that you like. We're going to take some more plastic bags and fill out around the neck. Okay, once you're happy with the angle of the, of the mask and you have it all filled out, what you want to do is put roll of all-purpose wire that you had, you're going to want to cut small pieces of wire and cut them on an angle so you have a, a chisel point on each end. You're going to poke it through the mask and you're going to wire it to the neck. And this is more or less just a temporary um, way of securing the mask until you have the uh, cotton sheeting and the latex around the, the mask to uh, really secure it. Okay, we have our mask attached. The next thing you want to do is you want to cut two pieces of chicken wire. This is 48 by 48 square and you just fold it in half like we did with earlier on the uh, Angel of Death prop. And the one edge you're going to cut down the, uh, the finished edge, you're going to cut that wire off so you have all the little cut tips to uh, secure to the back of the gargoyle. Just position this up at the top, as high as you can up on the neck, right in the center of the back, and just start wiring it down. Once you get down here to the bottom, you're going to notice that you're wings extend a little bit. Now you can do one of two things. You can have them sticking out on to a point from the from the back if you want or you can do what I'm going to do and that is I'm going to put one staple in the back of this 2x6 and then I'm going to fold this up and then whenever I scrunch up the, the wire it'll bring another point down to it. you can go ahead and attach the second wing and then we'll be ready for shape. And we took the time and we already shaped the one wing to give you something to, uh, to see. And we're going to show you now how we did that on the other side. And 
first what you want to do you want to get your coat hangers and you're going to cut the, the top hanger part off just discard that and you're going to open this up as straight as you can get it Okay, you're going to take your coat hanger wire and you're going to weave it in and out from the tip of the wing. In and out. It doesn't have to be every hole. You can have every other hole. And you're only about half an inch down from the top edge. Okay, once you have about an inch sticking out of the uh, past the end of the, the wing tip, you just want to take and you want to bend that around and then pull back a little bit and just push it in so that it's now a secured end. Okay, we have the first wire already inserted in the top of the wing. What we're going to do right here is the tip of the first wire. We're going to bring our second wire in about six inches back from where the other one ended and continue weaving through. And we're going to take this wire all the way to the back of the neck. Once you have the wire inserted a couple inches into the back of the neck, you're going to cut off the remaining piece of wire that sticks out of the wing. Okay, the last piece of wire is going to go up the edge of the wing on the back all the way up to the neck and you start down at the base where it, the body is mounted to the 2x6 and just start to weave it in and out. And this is going to give the back some support and keep the weight of the finished wings from collapsing the chicken wire. installed into the wings. The next step is to begin to shape the wing and we'll start up here at the tip and we're just crinkling the top edge down around that support wire. Form yourself a beginning tip. You can also have down the long edge of the wing you're going to crinkle that to to give that some support. is in the middle of the wing, you're going to have it bow inward. So you're going to basically put a crease down that. And then where it curves down behind the shoulder, that's going to be humped up a little bit. Here, where it's curved down right after the wing tip, 
curve that a little bit and shake that. You also want to take and cut several spots in the center of the wing and wire the two sections together for some added support. Okay, one last piece of wire needs to be installed into the chest. For this one you're going to bend the back around and make a, a small curve in the wire. You're going to insert it in the center of the chest through the back. crimp that shut so that it stays around the chicken wire. On the back, you're going to want to make sure that you have the back pulled out to the right position. You don't want it sunken in. And you're going to cut the wire off about an inch past the chicken wire. Just going to bend the wire. And then crimp down the loop. Okay, our last step before covering the prop with fabric and latex is to cut small pieces of chicken wire and fasten them anywhere that there's a weak bend or joint. And you can pretty much gauge where your weak spots are at just by rocking the prop back and forth and you'll notice where they, where they have a tendency to move a lot. We're going to be doing the knees, the shoulders, we're going to extend the, the feet and the hands a little bit and back here at the Hip, we're going to attach it to the thigh a little bit better and just continue all over the prop and strengthen it up. step is to pre-cut all your pieces of caught sheeting. Now we have a small pile of strips. These are about 36 inches long. They vary in size anywhere between 5 to 6 inches wide. You're also going to have some wider strips. These are about 36 to 48 inches long and these ones are about 12 inches. You're going to need two sheets that are um, 7 by 5 and these are going to be used to cover your wings. Once you get all those ripped down, you're also going to want to take some of your uh, all-purpose bailing wire and you're going to want to cut down small pieces about five inches long. Okay, we got our latex here. We're using this five gallon bucket, however, you're only going to use about a gallon. Uh, you might want to get a, a five gallon bucket and pour your gallon into that. It'll help uh, eliminate a lot of the mess. You're also going to want to make sure you have your wire cutters handy because you're going to be cutting sections of the chicken wire to hold the strips of uh, cotton sheeting onto your prop. So we're going to start with our small strips. We took the time to cover our floor with a drop cloth and you might also want to do this outside because latex has a very strong ammonia smell. Just start by dipping your strips into the latex and wring out all the excess. We're starting with our arms, we're going to wrap this around here. You don't have much time to work with this because the 
latex is going to start to set up pretty fast with air because there's just a light coating on these pieces. So you want to get them on as quickly as you can. You don't have to make them perfectly smooth. We're going to be covering these with another layer of sheet and latex to give it a smoother look. This is just building it up a little bit. done we're going to start on the legs just do them the same way just take your strips and wrap them around there's no right or wrong way to to cover this just a little simpler to do the arms and the legs first and then use larger sheets to uh, to cover over the, the wrap that way that you don't have a mummy look did the shoulders at the, up at the top. Now we're going to start with larger sheets and we're going to start at the back. Get the back covered. That way we'll have something to wrap the chest pieces around and stick to. where there's nothing to stick to you can do one of two things you can take your wire cutters and cut small pieces of the chicken wire and use that to act as a hook to hold that on there or you can do what I'm doing here and that's just pushing it through and sticking it to itself on the inside sheets to cover over the, the arms and the legs, give it a more single layer skin look. Just do the best you can, wrap them around, tuck it and blend it together just by smearing it on.
one of our wings already formed and in position where we're going to have it on our finished prop. We're going to show you how we did this on the other side. Okay. You're going to start by taking this lengthwise so that the majority of it's hanging on the ground. You're going to bring it up inside of the wing. You're going to bring it around to the back. as far as we can possibly get it. Next we're going to write this up over here temporarily. Now we're going to wrap this up over Once you get it up to the back, you're going to want to overlap this in the front. So you're going to move the part that you have up here temporarily out of the way. Bring this around. Now don't make it too tight because you're going to want to have some slack in it so you can pull it back into the curves of the wing. Like I said, you gotta work really fast with this, otherwise it's gonna start setting up on you and you're gonna have a real hard time moving. sure that you have enough slack to get into those creases. And tuck it back in all the way as far into the back as you can. you got it pretty good. Your next step is going to be to get your pieces of wire and bend them into U's. And from the inside of the wing, where they're going to be tucked back in, you're going to poke it through and out the back. And you're going to just bend these over. down in. And you can cover that up with some of the sheeting. As that tucks that in gives it a contoured look that it's supposed to have. Probably going to have to put three or four of these in to make sure the wing has its right shape.
once you get your wings covered, you want to attach it to the body, give it a better appearance. And this particular one is going to be attached to this leg, so we're going to first start by putting a piece of wire through the chicken wire and sheeting on the leg. to dry overnight your next step is to apply a brush on coat of latex for the entire prop you want to work this in to all the little creases and crevices in between all the joints and get a nice thick even coat Once you get this coat of latex brushed on, you want to let it dry 24 hours and then determine whether or not you think another coat is required. Normally only two coats are needed, but if your first and second coat were put on thick enough, you might have to put on a third. And after you have all your coats brushed on, make sure that it's thoroughly dry before you go on to the next step. Okay, this next step is going to help strengthen your prop. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting small slits into the arms and legs and we're going to be injecting polyurethane foam sealant inside. Now once this expands, it's going to fill in the cavity and it's going to become rigid and it's going to help strengthen your prop. Now to do this, what you want to do is you want to cut on the side of the leg, you're going to cut a small hole in between one of the holes in the chicken wire. And it only has to be about 3 eighths of an inch wide. We're just using an old steak knife for this. You're going to insert your polyurethane foam and normally the can has to be upside down. Make sure you read your instructions before using this stuff. And we're going to fill this approximately one third full according to the directions. Since you can't see inside there, you're going to have to kind of just guesstimate. We're going to do that there. We're going to do that up here on the hip. Or actually the thigh. We're going to also do this on the arms. Keep an eye on it for several hours. Once this stuff starts to expand, you're going to have to feel to see how hard it's getting and make sure that you didn't put in too much and it's going to be ballooning your arms out and your legs out. What you want to do is if that is the case, you can keep squeezing in on that and it will collapse itself before it sets up. 